What's up guys, Adam here with Hometown Acres. Welcome back. We are here with Tyler the logger and Tyler gave me a call the other day and said, hey, I got a logging job that is pretty close to you and it's a big one. We're bringing out all the equipment for it. And I know a lot of you guys showed interest in seeing what Tyler does. Uh, we've bought some firewood poles from him and uh, he's actually come out to our property and walked our woods with us and talked about proper forest management. And so I thought, why not come out to a big job here and see what you got going on. So this job here, Tyler, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, this is a 60 acre property. Um, it was pretty thick with poplar and understory. Uh, so that's why we have all the big equipment in here, feller buncher and uh, our chip wood pile. We're have a chipper in here next week, whole tree chipping. And yeah, it's just a whole different deal than you know chainsaw and cable skitters and what yeah. normal people get. This is, a, this is a big job here. So let's walk around. We'll show you all the different equipment that's used on a big job like this and kind of show you how you lay out your, well, your landing, right? Yep. Yeah. All right.
All right, so we're walking the job site with Tyler here. Tell us what's uh, what's going on. What are you? What are the goals of this property? Well, the goal here, the main one, is to thin some of the poplar out. It just it was really heavy with poplar. It's not letting it grow good. It's not great grade. Um, we'll have to see some of the poplar. You'll be able to see the mineral in it. Uh, but we want to leave the select trees so they grow better. You know, we're leaving all the white oak on the property. Like there's one right there. You know, because that's what we want to come back. So at this point, regular conventional logging with a chainsaw, just it wasn't going to get it where we needed to. So that's why this is the route we chose. Yeah, I was going to say, looking around here, it, it is very densely populated with poplar logs. So this section of the woods here hasn't been touched yet by any of the equipment, and this just gives you an idea of how dense it is with poplar. I mean, poplar, 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 all of this is poplar. There's like one or two maples back there. Uh, I don't really see much else other than maple and poplar here. Yeah, beech. I mean, that's another species we're trying to eliminate. Elm. Yeah. Because you know, this property is wet, so that's where you do get a lot of elm and beech. Yeah. So. so if poplar is what you guys are mainly after here, and this is mostly populated with poplar, what uh, if a clear cut is 100%, what would you say percentage wise you guys are taking out of this woods? Probably roughly 60, 65%. So over half, yep. and that's on 60 acres. So let's talk about what equipment you're using to uh, do that. So what's this first piece of equipment here? This is a John Deere 895 Feller Buncher with a quadco saw on it. Um, it's two years old. And what does is, what is a machine like that weigh? Uh, that one's probably about 90,000. So it, like this job, we had to pick the right time to get in here because this was a really wet job. One, because it's so thick and it's just a wet area. We're in Mercer County. So really the time to get into this property was right now or in the middle of winter. So. Yeah. Now what does a machine like that cost? I know the, the head, the mulcher head's probably a separate sale than the machine yeah, itself. I mean, new, you're looking at just about a million bucks. God. Uh, and then what's the head on there? Uh, that quad go head is probably 80 grand in a head. Yeah. So, I think what's crazy about those machines is, you know, if I'm thinking about an excavator, you start to get a tree sideways, there's no way you're going to stop it. But that thing, you control it all the way down to the ground. Yeah. The hydraulics on that thing are just you insane. You can really take a pretty large tree and if you have to, you can stand it back up. Maybe so you just, could take it from the ground and stand it up. Yeah. They're just unbelievably powerful. Way more than just an excavator. Yeah. What is the max cutting diameter? How big of a tree can you take with that? So that's a 24 inch head, but you can probably cut a 40 inch tree if you had to. I mean, you wouldn't want to do it all day long. It'd yeah. just be a pain, but you just cut it from one side. You can even put a little face cut in it. You know, same as the chainsaw. It's just a lot more crude. Yeah. Um, and then go around the back side and finish it off. Kind of like hauling my dump trailer full of logs with the F-150. You can do it once or twice, but you don't want to do it all day every day. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, well, that is cutting the tree down. Let's move on to the next piece of equipment of actually hauling them out of here. And this is the skitter. Tyler, tell us a little bit about this skitter here. Well, this is a brand new John Deere 648L. I mean, it's the newest skitter you can get right now. Um, not the biggest, but... For what we do, it's plenty big enough. Would you say this is a, a week old right now? Yep. And what is something like this way? Uh, about sixty thousand ish. I'm I'm real interested in total weight and total cost. What's this one cost too? Uh, well, it's three hundred and thirty nine thousand. Yeah, and you would know you just bought it. Yep. And it's got a grapple on it. Does this one have a winch? No, this one does not. No, but here I'll hand the camera up to you and you show them around the inside of that. So it's all joystick control, your steering, your grapple, your grapple buttons. Um, you can run the seat either way. You can run it this way, pointing backwards, or you can drive it pointing forwards. Uh, go pedal, brake on that side. Go pedal and brake on that side. I mean, this is, this is basically the Cadillac of skitters. So once you get the logs up here with the skitter, what's next? Uh, they'll run into the knuckle boom landing loader. He'll cut the scrag wood and the logs off, stack all the chipwood. He's in charge of trimming, log lengths, loading trucks. So the landing loader here, let's 
do our normal routine here. What's total weight, total cost? Uh, weight on that thing is probably same thing, about 40, 45,000 with the saw cost. I mean, it's 200. 250, 300,000. So this is actually your least expensive piece of equipment here on the job site? Yeah. That's kind of surprising. So you bring the logs up here. This thing basically marks out your length. What uh, what are you cutting everything to here? Uh, right now, the market we have, we're just cutting <clears throat> the butt log, maybe the second log off, and then everything else is going for scrag wood and then chip wood. This is quite a pile of chip wood you've got here. Now you said in addition to the, basically the three pieces of equipment, the uh, feller buncher, the skitter, and the landing loader, you've got a chipper coming here next week to get through this giant pile of poles here. And this is, you just leave this all treetop and everything, and that chipper will run these entire treetops through. Yeah, the whole tree, I mean, he could do the log and everything if we wanted to. Um, he actually loads it with that. Uh, John Deere loader right there and it's got its own debarker you know, it pulls the, the leaves and the smaller stuff off because that affects your quality of the chip and then uh, it'll just take grapple fools and stuff her in blows it right in the back of a tractor trailer and who are you selling that to uh, a lot of it's going to Clarion board uh, Mount Jewett paper Georgia Pacific really um, yeah so most of this poplar any idea where it's gonna end up or what it'll be uh like all the scrag wood it's going to jacob weavers and Cock cockerton yeah um, and they make pallet boards out of it so they'll cut you know that 20 foot log into 39 inch pieces and rip you know your half inch pallet boards and stuff out of it and all the wood chips i know you said like georgia pacific what do they do with it uh some of it's for heat and then some of it's you know how they make osb and plywood okay well, that we'll is pretty. Have to have an inspector come out and inspect the chip quality, the size. Yeah, because you said you can't have leaves and bark and other stuff. Right. It's got to be pure wood. Right. We can't chip pine in with it. Pine's its own thing. So. Yeah. Very cool to see the other end of you know everyday products you see at the store and kind of where it comes from and how it's made. Yep. Tyler, tell me about this chain on this saw because obviously you're cutting whole trees with it. It's not your everyday typical chainsaw chain. Yep. Is a CSI buck saw. It's a three-quarter chain. I mean, definitely a lot bigger than your chain. Well, we got chainsaw sitting right there. I mean, that that tooth is the size of my finger. <clears throat> yep. That's crazy. Make now, sure it work. Yeah, sharpening this. How long does that take to sharpen? Ah, uh, five minutes or so. We just use a cordless angle grinder. I mean, it <laughs> it's not any precision with this really. It's just speed and power. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Full hydraulics. Yep. All right, so Tyler, you got about four or five pieces of equipment here, about almost $2 million worth of equipment. You got four people running the equipment. How much fuel do you run through? I see you got a big tank sitting over here. A thousand gallon or a little bit more a week. Yeah? Yeah. Now, what effect has inflation had on what you guys do here? No, oh, it's, it's huge. I mean, your, your, your fuel is everything, trucks, equipment. I mean, that's what controls the price of the timber, what the landowner gets paid what we make on it so you said a uh, thousand gallons a week so that's a 500 gallon tank that's a thousand gallons. that's a thousand gallons so to fill that is how much like five grand five grand yeah. and pre-inflation that would have been probably about half right yeah. yep. so that's just to show you fuel prices directly impacts what you guys are paying at the hardware stores for this stuff now obviously not poplar but you know what we're saying right what are you guys going to do with all this when you're done? Yep, everything will be cleaned back up. You know, the, the landing with the stone, we'll run the dozer down through it. We'll put, peel all the bark and debris off of it. Um, we'll pull one stick of the pipe because we have a widen for the trucks, tractor trailers to get in and out. The culvert, yeah. Yep, and then we'll pull, you know, the good stone back and kind of top it everything and dress up the stone so the landowner will have access here when we're done. Yeah. And we'll you know run the dozer down the little skid roads clean all the ruts up you know plant a cover crop or something so we don't have you know open ground and ruts and water holes and erosion and yep. all that here it's pretty flat but yeah that's you know the biggest thing people talk about when you get your property logged is uh what's it going to look like after sounds like you guys do the best you can to uh 
clean it all back up when you're done. Yep, big equipment, you just, just makes a bigger mess. You just gotta be ready to clean it up. Yep. All right, guys, so yeah, that is Tyler's logging operation here on a big 60-acre job. Like he said, taking about 65% of the material out of these woods. Uh, I will put a link to Tyler's contact information if anybody uh, in this area, where, what's your service area? How far will you go? I mean, I do PA West Virginia, Ohio, and New York. I mean, if we have to, I was just in Apollo, actually, a fellow that commented on your channel. I went down there yesterday. Oh yeah. Talked to his, so he's two hours from here. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll leave some contact information down below. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.